Hello, everybody. And it's been a minute, but yeah, we've got another room rumble. I was hanging out at Richard Madsen's uh, Demolish Doctrine, and uh, I heard Christians talking about how rewarded they are for good works and, and how you get your rewards. So the question that I posed to them when I went in was, how come bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? Basically, we're talking about the problem of evil today. Uh, it's a very basic argument uh, in, in principle. If the God's all good and all powerful, why do bad things happen to good people? Because if a God was all good, they wouldn't want that to happen. If they're all powerful, they can certainly stop it from happening. Uh, so we've got a problem here of the triomni God, the classical Christian God, not being able or unwilling to stop this evil and therefore negating the properties that he's said to hold. So there's a contradiction there. Um, now, when I run into Christians, all the they hit the, all the usual beats of the, the worst type of Christians out there. You know, the, the obnoxious interrupting, the uh, implied threats o over the internet, uh, the, the um, sort of talking to drown you out. At one point, someone was chanting to drown, drown me out. Um, the, the the sort of deflections into other areas. Um, one person deflected into Spinoza, and uh, I checked their sources and read up on Spinoza because I was pretty sure I was right. But yes, yeah, Spinoza didn't believe in an actual entity God. He believed in God being simply the natural law of the universe. That was God to him. So I was actually right on that one. And so... Uh, sort of one Christian quote mining heavily really misinterpreted Spinoza and by extension Einstein and their beliefs in God being, uh, well, Jesus, really. But um, part of it was sad. Part of it was, was really sad. Um, one guy sort of saying that, that losing a child was a good thing, um, which was just horrible to me. It, it really... I was treading lightly, but it kind of horrified me, and, and I'm sure you might feel the same. Uh, and I think that when you can't even do a sentence because somebody's unwilling to listen at that point, I'm, I'm not sure what the point is, but it does show just how bad their arguments are. Um, a man who claims to um, have a direct line and talks with God, and not only that, but God talks to him has no answer for the problem of evil. All he can do is deflect and evade and try and, you know, sort of attack my morality. Um, and the other guy, you know, he was just attacking me the entire time. Um, the, the, snide, the snideness, the sarcasm. If he had an answer, he would have given it, but he didn't. All he wanted to do is make me answer for my side. But the problem of evil is still there. If God has the power to change things why doesn't he um and it's a massive problem even though sort of they claim to have solved it but um i i really do like richard madsen he's he's a he's a fair man and he is a good guy i, I do like him but um i i don't know where they found these these guys they are the lowest of, of christian apologetics but they just highlight um the, the the problems with engaging with with people sometimes that um some people will not even listen to what you've got to say. Not just they won't disagree, but they will literally drown you out by trying to fill the, the room with noise. And uh, you can see that evidently in this one. But I hope you do enjoy. Let's get ready to rumble. So no, I don't I mean, know what that it, makes my blood. It, it, well, the Ethiopian Bible came out long before the British one did. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Think of who he is trying to make this deal appealing to we'll just say we'll just say they in your meet you're muted by the way richard i don't know if you know that but let's just say that these people like a good deal but who who giving the deal god Jesus? yes god the, 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 the oh, Gentiles yeah, you're work, just saying the absurdity of that as a notion yeah. that they like a good deal you know who I doesn't like, oh they want to haggle they like we want a good deal oh look okay it, look it. okay I'm let, just, let, I'm let just me ask saying. you guys a question i think Na I name think, a specific a promise. Name any specific promise in the Bible. Um, um, that when two people for... pray together, that they will have their, their prayer fulfilled. 
that's that's a claim that's not a promise the Amen. promise that jesus gives the sheep during the sheep and goat sermon so, some some promise of heaven let me be more specific oh, yeah. i was just saying yeah. not one jot nor tittle of his word would would be changed that the heavens and the earth would by all means fall away but not one jot nor tittle of his that, word would be that, changed that, that's, the sheep a, and that's the goat a promise sermons. but we were we were talking about heavenly rewards richard the sheep and the goat sermon remember what he said to the sheep well, I, I remember the sheep and the goat sermon. I'm having trouble getting a promise of heaven out of it. Blessed are you. It uh, just That's just basic ascension, right? Uh, I know he said uh, something along the lines. I'm trying, I guess I'm trying not to paraphrase it. Something about blessed are you. Uh, welcome into the, into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the earth. Something like that. Yeah, that's a promise of heaven. That's just ascension. The new covenant. Was that a okay, promise? I'll, shoot, I'll, Can I'll I just find read one. Matthew 18. It says, Again, I truly tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything and you ask, it will be done be for bound. you by my Father in heaven. For when two or three huh? are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Matthew 18, 19 to 20. Uh, okay, says, you can call that a promise or a claim. That, that That's fine. But that's, that's about, really not a promise about heaven. How about I'm that? That which you bind on well, earth. I'm sorry, be, I just came in here for an well, argument. That which you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That that yeah. which you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. That which you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Yeah, There's it's a just, promise. I, I want a very specific argument right now. That's um. Oh gosh, let me let me find a good one for the you. Here, promise guys. of eternal pretty, life. Pretty pretty specific. <laughs> um, I don't know. I thought mine was specific. I mean, as well, no, but it's I, I do general. have a question because I was watching and it was specific, before. but it wasn't the specific kind I wanted. Was it generally uh, specific? It was, it was generally, generally specific. specific. It was indeed. Uh, okay. Look at that. I got what were confidence. you trying to say, Mark? There was something on your head. I could tell. Oh, um, yeah. Like you were sort of saying, hey, like... you, you you have all these things of, of God doing things, and I'm wondering how you know that it's God doing them. Like if you're sort of talking about people doing the right thing and being um, rewarded by God for those good actions, and I'm wondering how you know that, that God is doing those things. Yeah, okay. Um, so you already know what an internal critique is. I don't think sure. I need to discuss that with you. Sure. Okay. We're doing an internal critique. Okay. That's fine. But, you okay. know, I, I think that good things happen to people that don't ask for them as well and don't don't believe in, in God. That so, you could be quoting the Bible right now, yes. Sure. Well, so I, 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 I don't get be careful. how... Well, the, the problem is that you've attributed to good things happening to people who are doing good by God, basically. But people who do bad things also good things happen to them. So yeah, this, that's what this the Bible is, says. This yeah, is the rain the internal. rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Is that what you mean? That's precisely it. Yeah. No? Yes, we hear and you. And how that. how do you know that it's the good thing that has has caused something good to happen? Because bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. So okay, I can how, I can see Mark. I can see I can see Mark the strength of your resolve. And, and I want to respect it. So I tell you what, we're going to stop screen. We're going to change topic completely. And you mean? because what because you are, that? as far as I can tell, the only uh, other than theist here. And Ooh. it is my assertion and belief that you, for that reason alone, deserve all of our attention. And I'm not being sarcastic <laughs> at all. I'm not okay. being sarcastic. What yeah, That might sound sarcastic. I'm not kidding. OK. In fact, if if we are doing what the Bible demands of us, we should turn all of our attention to you and I do agree. our best okay. to answer any question you have. So uh, I, w I have my brain somewhere else. I was half paying attention to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you could you repeat the idea, please, for me? Well, OK, so I was listening and you sort of said uh, there was sort of expressed the idea that you, that God is doing good things for people that do the right thing. Um, mm. So you could tell that God was acting in this way because good things are happening after people do the right thing. But mm. the, the problem that I see is people do the right thing and bad ha things happen as well. And people do bad things and good things happen to them. So I'm wondering how you can tell that um the the um following 
good thing is actually caused by the the belief in God or the the things that you're doing that that sort of honors God. Yes, please. Yes. All right. So I think where you're mistaken, Mark, is um, and and, okay. and I understand. I think I understand what you're saying. And correct me if I'm wrong at any point in time. Interrupt me, matter of mm-hmm. fact. Um. So the 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 good things that are going to happen for those that do good things aren't going to happen necessarily here on earth that's going to be i'm not storing my treasures here i'm storing them on earth Mm -hmm. on heaven meaning bad things could still happen to good people that do good things or actually decent people that do good things Uh, even jesus said why do you call me good there's only one who's good and that's god so i always try to correct myself so so i think what's happening is secular people think of the rewards that happen here on earth and that Believe me, I had the same issue. I'm like, why did why do these evil people like Epstein? You know, he's probably still alive, diddling kids on some new island, and and some cadaver that had been in a freezer for ten years because it looked kind of like him is probably switched out with this dude because it seems to me that news? it seems to uh, me that evil people get rewarded, right? There, there's I, real I news about that actually being true, by the way. That's oh, kind that, of a that, that actually did theory. come out I, as being I have true. No idea. Yeah, that's uh, I have no idea. idea. Let's stay well, away let, from let, the conspiracy let, let, theories and try to yeah, stay on topic. And instead of giving examples, Mark's a smart <laughs> enough guy. He doesn't need examples. He just needs the yeah. philosophy. Can I, I, I um, that, jump but, in but then, here then with this? You're sort uh, of, but then you're sort of using rewards after you're dead as evidence of God doing these things so how, how do you actually know that that is is coming if you've got no like have you spoken to anybody that's been to heaven yeah god yeah you've spoken to, be a to, christian, god. You, to be a christian you have to know god that's the that's the only okay. prerequisite so to so know somebody you have to speak with them just like we're speaking with you we have to get to know okay. you you have to get to know god if you don't know does god, he speak back does talk he to speak jesus back? all the time absolutely yes. so what 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 does what what does he tell you? Well, All different things. You. Just like you, you would tell us different him. things. Come on, one yeah, at a time, guys. Let's not get too excited because we have an atheist. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so, oh, I didn't know. I couldn't tell. Oh, uh, well, I mean, it, it, the, the channel name was probably a bit of a giveaway, but um, just aside from that, um, no, I'm wondering, like, so um, if if God is speaking to you, like, what? sort of all, all different how, things I, I, what i like the best answer i like albert einstein's answer to your question the best he says that you know he doesn't care about this or that spectrum of this element or this that phenomenon all he cares about in science we use science to watch and learn is to know god's thoughts the rest are details he says so god speaks to everybody including you in all kinds of different myriad ways and i think that when people uh, come to the lord as they say and they, they first meet jesus for real it's always unique. It's always different. And for me as a scientist, that is evidence of God's, you know, trueness, I guess, the, the reality that God doesn't, there's no cookie cutter way. There's no, there's no kumbaya or whatever church thing you do. There's no Methodist version of, of knowing God. You have to meet God on your own. And so to answer well, your I, question, you like, like uh, Todd said, you've got to go talk to God. Well, Einstein was referencing the God of Spinoza, which is physics. It's physics and the universe. No, 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 no. Agenda. See, that's, again, that's another, I'm sorry, that, that's an extraordinarily ignorant, stupid thing on the internet. Spinoza specifically said that Jesus is God, and I can quote him directly for you if you like. I have his political. Uh, okay, please do. Where, where, is, where do you say that? Yeah, nope, get we're going to get back on topic. Last last thing on Spinoza. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. give, me, give me a few seconds. i got to bring up my quote uh, book here. Hold on. I'll give you the reference and everything. Hold on. All right. You want the long one yes. or the or shorter? Yeah. So Einstein called himself, he said he's not an atheist. He's called himself an agnostic or a religious non-believer. Yeah. He also said that, that nobody can, uh, or everybody can feel the presence of Jesus by reading a Bible, which is a strictly Christian thing. Einstein never said that. Yes, he did. He said it in the Saturday Evening Post interview, 1929. I've got that as well. But here's Spinoza. He said, this yeah. is his uh, Tractatus Theologico Politicus book, page 12. He said, this is Spinoza's own book. It says, we may be able quite to comprehend that God can communicate immediately with man. So therefore, start there alone, Spinoza is not a pantheist. He believes that there's a separation between God and man. For without yeah. the intervention of bodily means, he communicates to our minds, his essence. Still a man who can by pure intuition comprehend ideas which are neither contained mm-hmm. in nor deducible from the foundations of our natural knowledge must necessarily possess a mind far superior to those of his fellow men. 
nor do I believe that any have been so endowed save Christ. To him, the ordinances of God leading men to salvation were revealed directly without words or visions so that God manifested himself to the apostles through the mind of Christ as he formerly did to Moses through the supernatural voice. In this sense, the voice of Christ, like the voice which Moses heard, may be called the voice of God. And it may be said that the wisdom of God, i.e. wisdom more than human, took upon itself in Christ's human nature and that Christ was the way of salvation. And you're saying Einstein said that. The Jew Einstein. Spinoza. Spinoza. Spinoza was a yeah. Judeo-Christian, so, so was, was Einstein. Spinoza, Spinoza's God was sort of... No, no, no. I, I don't know what... You're, you no, didn't no, no, listen. No, no. Hey, 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 hey. We, hey, we hey, need to go no, back to the topic is, because you are ignoring Spinoza and Einstein. No, see, this this is sort of uh, very early on when, when he was part of Judeo-Christianism. Like, you're, you're taking, you're quote mining no, this him was from his an final earlier part. No, no, no. You're quote mining him from an earlier part in his life where no, under the later part of his life, he did say that the universe is God, and that's all. No, he, like, didn't. he didn't. Absolutely, he did. But we're, no, we're getting no, way no. off topic well, I just here. Because you're, you're basically saying... Still, you what? still have to let him finish, though. He's lying. So basically... You're lying. No, you're lying. You're lying. No, this is How not going to be a fruitful conversation. No, 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 no. I can no, reread no, the no, quote. No. You will not listen to it. Okay, so... You know, th this is very well understood that Spinoza's God was merely physics and the universe. No, I'm not, not. sure it's, why it's Joel wrong. is sort of trying to say, hey, it's, it's you know, he was a, a God believer when he 100% wasn't. It, it's it's really weird. Um, but, well, you know, primary weird source people are around at the moment. But I want to get back. I want to get back to your claim that you hear voices and that voice is God. It's How not always a voice. No, like no, 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 Joel. Let me finish. 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 You're strong. How do you demonstrate that 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 voice is actually God? All you're doing is deflecting and distracting. That's all you're doing. Well, How do you demonstrate is, that you actually? No, you claim to be a prophet. You speak to God, God and God talks step. to you. Joel, let me finish. I'm Why are you interrupting? Lost. Why are you interrupting? Because this is a fruitless conversation. You're claiming to be a prophet that, that yeah. hears the voice of friend. God. How do you demonstrate that that is an actual God? Like Spinoza said. Like Spinoza said. Yeah. How did Spinoza demonstrate that the voice in your head is an actual God? No, he said that Christ spoke to the apostles and Christ was God, as all Christians. So you're an apostle. You're an apostle. No, Mark, see, that's, a, that's another common misconception that, that religious atheists maintain. They don't understand to be a Christian, quote unquote, according to Christ himself from the Bible, you have to know him. How do you know somebody? How do I know somebody? You well, don't. I mean, nobody knows bio. nobody. That's the real well, answer. If I could just answer it was directed towards. Oh, yeah. You so haven't I'm talked enough. Fine. That's right, Mark. You go on. Well, I'm sorry people are asking me. You questions. should be. Maybe. Apology accepted. Oh. For I'm, now, you're, hurry up! You're basically trying to say. No, that I'm not I basic. Nothing. We move on. I no, thought you no, had so much to, to fucking say, Mark. I thought you had so much to say. What are you so come angry on, about? Come on, base. Give Who's him, angry? give him space, whether he I'm deserves him it or space. not. He's not you taking angry. it. Listen to you. <laughs> you're like swearing and carrying on. Very Christian behavior. Congratulations. He has I'm not a Christian. He's not a Christian. So that's another straw man. So you're you're batting a thousand tonight, buddy. He just guessed and he's shooting dark guys. Guys. Guys, no, please. I'm sorry. I'm with, I, uh, I, I assure you, sort work. of the god, god mode. So, so wing, what, bada, 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 bada. So wing. Mark, are you familiar with Carl Jung? We yeah, want so a better. The, the no, no, let's not change the topic. Knows, uh, no, the no, it's it's part of his, his question. The topic you, is you, how to move the just, goalposts at the yeah, last see, second. This is this yeah, is just like sort that. of Christians talking over the top because they've got no answers whatsoever. They, That's they, not. They, you sound I, really happy. Really just right. Tell happy. us who's a Christian on yeah, panel. So At least tell us that. Basically, this uh, Joel said that um, apostles and Spinoza said that Jesus would talk to the apostles and he claims to hear the voice of God, but cannot demonstrate in any way that he does, in fact, hear the voice of God. If you could tell us something that no right. one could um, possibly Paul, know, perhaps Paul, who excuse Saul, me, excuse me, you're asking, you're asking me, for proof, I'm going to give it to you. Excuse me, he's excuse trying to do a red herring. Um, when, when, you're not, you're when, not excused when that you say that you're, you're not excused the voice now, an omniscient being. Um, you need you to be able proof, to demonstrate I'm that to give and would know you things that nobody else this is called you can't give proof we've been over there shut the fuck up not doing it I'm going to kick you all out I'm just going to kick you all out and keep Mark yeah good job Mark serious well GS would stop interrupting 
I'm not well, the one interrupting. But you guys, you guys either respectfully wait for everyone to finish their sentence, their idea, not just sentence, but the total idea, and then have your rebuttal, your response, or it's just going to be nonsense. No one's going to understand what you're saying. This is useless. You want to talk about useless conversation? Talk over each other. Thank you. Yeah, Flo. Yeah, Flo. Mark, you're first. In all fairness, oh, I have already finished. That. Uh, you, you know, you mustn't have been listening. But nobody but likes you, probably. Uh, I would beg to differ. Uh, I want to get over. back. Let, let, hold on, guys. I want to get back to over. Mark's original question. Yeah. Let Mark and, ask And questions. off of these tangents, which have been three so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I'm going to get back to it. Uh, I believe Saul, who became Paul on the road to Damascus, heard the voice of Jesus. As he was blinded, not only did he hear the voice, but the people, there were witnesses with him that heard the voice. And, th and because they heard the voice and understood that he was struck blind, they helped him get to the place that the voice told him to get to. And That's then left him there answer, for three days. The first question. The first question oh, was sorry. rain Power. on on the uh, the believer, non-believer alike. Yeah, that was the, the just first and one. the unjust alike. Roger. So, yeah. well, okay. I, I think... I so the answer is life life is tough get a helmet all right next question now todd answered yes, that too i thought thought beautifully by you know uh yeah. re reasserting what the biblical science talks about how That's you know there's still hell on earth you know there's still there's still bad people that choose to be bad here so the the promises of heaven are not on earth necessarily and base but, but, but you have an answer yeah, yeah. Uh, to the original question which was uh i forgot what it was at this point Rain on the just and unjust alike. Yeah. Good yeah. things happen right, to so bad people, etc. Yeah, yep, got it. All right, what I was going to say to that is, isn't good bad something that is subjectively looked at, discerned as a result? Meaning that something bad that you can name right now, we could find good within. So how would you even set the standard for good and bad? Excellent point, especially for those that aren't Christian. Yes. Well, it depends on your moral framework. Really. I got a speeding it ticket. On, it depends on your ethical framework of whatever society. I just gave you an example. In. I yeah, just gave good. you an you example. Get a you get it was a good that you got a speeding ticket because then if you would have continued on that path, you would have gotten a car accident and lost your life. Maybe. You uh, don't well, know for my, sure, my, but maybe. My actual, my oh, actual my question, like, first off, I asked, how do you know that God is actually doing any of this, the reigning on the just and unjust alike? And it seems to just be a faith position. But the follow up question to that answer was when you said, well, we're not talking about that. We're talking about heaven. I, I asked, how do you know that there is the heaven to go to? How do you know that this reward is, is waiting for your good actions and then i was told that god has a radio into joel can we not go oh. through it again mark yeah yeah but i'm just saying that they didn't actually address my question right but we He's are doing a um, critique here so well, so the conversation okay. needs to be is the bible consistent within itself that needs to be the conversation now your original question meets that criteria it does if, if i may ask Mark, are you familiar with the famous scientist George Washington Carver? Nope. Not Another really distraction. Either. Brick Jones, no, no, your it, turn to answer the a, question. It's not a distraction. <laughs> oh, I, I promise you, Richard, it's not a distraction. Um, okay, it's it's not a distraction. To, yeah, it's an appeal to authority, logical fallacy. No, it's not. It's, I've never said he's an authority. Okay, you're not familiar with him. You reminded me of him because you said a, a radio in your head. He, he's a famous scientist, but yeah, he said that... that uh, nature is like a radio broadcast station that god is is transmitting at 24 hours a day if only we'd, we'd tune in and listen i love that yeah, appeal, appeal to authority, authority. How it's not a story because it's not okay. a fallacy because i'm not saying he he that what he said is true you're you, playing you, some you're playing gotcha you games it's definitely appeal no, to authority it, it, has, it has no relevance unless he's an authority oh it wasn't a SFB, yeah, it you told me, sfb you told me it was going to be on topic it's off topic. It, it is. It no, doesn't it is answer. Topic. It doesn't answer it his original question. It does because the <laughs> ultimate answer that I that I was trying to help explain earlier is that God speaks to everybody in different ways, including Him, including all of us here. So you reference an authority. No. So why does it's he another speak example to me? by a why I, an amazing scientist how God speaks? 
How will men yeah, spill? N- it's Newton evidence, was a, it's scientific look, evidence of look, God Joel, speaking to How Joel. scientific? Newton was a genius, right? He invented calculus. Absolute genius. One of the greatest minds of all time. He also thought he could turn lead into gold using mercury and alchemy. Like, just because you are a good in one field doesn't make everything you believe automatically true. That is textbook. Yeah, everyone knows that. Nobody disagrees with that. Why are you stating the obvious? Okay, yeah, so moving on, to then, yeah, back to the yeah. original question. Brick <laughs> Jones, would you guys, like a would you like a poke in different ways? Yeah, do you want Joel? to try to form a sentence, Brick? Based. Brick yeah. Jonesy, if you're available, do you have an answer to the original question, which was how can God be just and and Mark, tell me if I say this poorly or even correct me. Um okay. how how can God be good allowing uh blessings? or rain to fall on the just and unjust alike? Or um, why is it that sometimes good behavior uh, gets bad rewards, vice versa? So, yeah, my view is this. Basically, if you're looking for the answers from any experience that man can give you, then you're looking in the wrong place. So this falls down to the question that believers face probably every single day and the answer is simple in my mind is that believing or faith however you want to put it is not actually knowing it so faith is the assured expectation of things hoped for by the evidence that we've already seen we take the evidence (laughs) into consideration that's what the bible says that is that's literally hebrews 11 1 so no, it says things I'm so Hold on, hold on, hold on. Things now, I waited a long time. Sorry, no, you bad. still fucked it up. So, base, just shut up, dude. So, when you claim that you know something, you can claim it all day long. Oh, God. But if you claim that you know it, then you also believe it. There are things that you can claim to believe that you do not know. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. But, you know, knowledge is just justified true belief. But Hebrews 11, 1 is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I, I don't think it doesn't say previously seen. Seen, the word seen, previously seen, same thing. No, it's no, seen. no. It says the evidence of things not seen. He's saying seen, the word seen is past tense. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of elementary there. Yeah, you don't have to say previously. But Brick likes to use like different words. Like uh, it, it, he says, it's not seen at all in in Hebrew. I'm, I'm trying yes, to put it in Yes, but unseen terms. is past tense. You're, you're, it's a tense thing that doesn't even apply re- regardless. But I mean, you can scrunch up your no, eyebrows, un- dude, or whatever. Unseen isn't, isn't a, a, a tense thing. No, unseen is a negation. I mean, you can bite seen. your pillow and ch- and throw punches at your mattress later too. That's about all the good that's going to do. All right. Wow, that's a compelling idea. Very gay, I'm, really I'm quick there. Really struck. I'm, I'm said he's going to bite his pillow and yeah. punch his mattress. How is that gay? What are you going to do to him? Oh, okay. Is so that all you've state. got? Is just <laughs> yes. That's all nope. you've got. We're, wow. we're going to ignore it and we're going to move <laughs> on wow. because this all is, right. this is not, no, no, no. That's an intellectual statement if ever I've heard one. Like, so, not so flow state. Did you have anything to add to Mark's question? Um. Well. For sure. Yes. Okay. Which question? Because I've heard a lot of fucking questions since I got here. But first Let of all, reiterate it. I owe you an apology. I was rude to you last night. You didn't deserve it. You're very polite. That was my bad. Sometimes listening nice. to you talk what makes me want to kill myself, though. I, I appreciate that, Brody. Oh, Thank you. Jeez. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. So the original question was why does good behavior, biblically good behavior, and sometimes get rewarded, biblically? Uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes, why does biblically bad behavior sometimes get rewarded? Biblically good behavior get punished. Well, assuming that, like from a biblical paradigm, right? If if I'm believing that the Bible's true, then the only conclusion that I can draw is that my orientation towards good and bad are misinformed. Because if God's all powerful, if God's all knowing, if God created everything, then everything is operating exactly as it should. And so my judgment on what is good and bad is off. That's a very Gnostic uh, explanation, but accurate if you're Gnostic. Uh, I mean, it's just a logical sequence. 
Oh, well, it is, but that's not the only logical sequence available. There's a better one. El Perro. What, well, uh, what is it? Qu- well, I'm trying to distract. I'm, okay. Well, I know, but... <laughs> it's, it's, entirely, it's entirely possible that there's a tradition within Christianity that that flavored the translation. And when we read these things, we're looking at it the wrong non-original way, which is evident if you look at the ancient Christian religions or Judaism. El Perro, do you need the question repeated? Okay. <laughs> why, why is it, in, an, in a biblical internal critique, why is it, compared to reality, that um, sometimes good behavior gets bad results, sometimes bad behavior gets good results in reality? From within a b- biblical explanation. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, intent and motivation. And a lot of people have lost the a true foundation of good intent. And though they think it's kind of like going down the street and you see a drug addict and he's desperate, he, he's reaching out and he, he wants some money. Do you give him money? Is that really going to help him? Or do you have the passion and insight to, to fulfill the intent of being able to help him rather than just wanting to help him the way he wants help. That so are you saying that the bad things happen are actually good? Like, like I had a question, like flow state says that everything's happening as it should be. So does that mean everything bad that happens is in fact a good thing? Um, not necessarily everything, in fact, can be a good thing. But I do believe in, say, my own situation it might seem a terrible fact that my son died but in reflection in reflection it's one of the best lessons i've ever had in my life but that's still not a good thing that's it is a good thing it is a good thing so it's a good thing that your son died no there there came good out of it yeah well i could i could what i I was getting at earlier i could have been much worse because I could have been much worse because I went there. I told God, fuck you when my son died. If I can't live out and see the purpose in my son in being able to present myself through my son and show that he's better than me and I'm better than my father. So that's a progressive story of, of an inherent want for your children to be better than yourself. I lost that. I'm, I have no legacy left to go. And I got pissed. What other purpose do I have in life as a father if I can't bring in that legacy inheritance, right? So I gave up on him, told him, fuck off, until I realized, wait a minute, I still got another child. And though it's a daughter, it shouldn't separate any any further from the love and extension that I'm supposed to give her. That's my true position is stewardship. So in effect, it gave me a more powerful lesson to come back to him. Yeah, I, 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 mm. I really, I'm re- sorry for your loss. It's, it's terrible that, that you went through that. Um, I, Again, I think it's one of the greatest was, aspects in my Pero, life. Pero, mate, I'm trying to be really generous, but seriously, I've got to be able to talk. Um, I think that we've got to separate a good thing happening out of something with the thing itself. Like, for instance, the, 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 the thing itself is absolutely terrible if we take it in virtue of just it happening. It is what you've garnered from it that is the good thing. Okay, so I don't think it's a good thing that that happened. You cannot possibly say But if you believe in heaven, then wouldn't it be a good thing, death? Well, I I don't know, but I don't think... No, 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 no. I said if you believe in heaven. Oracle, Oracle, let me respond. Any father... But you're already not responding. uh, Well, come on. I've only (laughs) said two two words, seriously. What what he's Um, saying is the same thing I'm saying. I don't think so. Well, he, he is. I'm the one that knows because I understand what he's saying. He's saying that just because my son died doesn't mean that's a bad thing. The good thing is that he died because he doesn't have to suffer with this idiocy and insanity here. He's already in heaven and regained his reward. He gained his reward in six months. Why do I have to suffer 58 years so far? Okay, so if that's the case, why? Like, so here's the problem with that. If it is a good thing that children go to heaven, and this is the kind of thought that it leads down, 
it leads you to think, well, shouldn't we send every child to heaven if it's such? Mark, no. is this going to be a new no. question? No, you're you're mistaking that. You're going uh, the far extremist. Oh man. You're, yeah, you're going far extremist That's abortion. Wrong. You're yeah, you're going far extremist abortion level shit. What's the straw man? You just said it was a good thing that your child got to heaven. Yeah. According to the way my life was going and what i done in my life, you don't know me, brother. Uh, it, it's, it's been a hell okay. of a fucking ride. If, if my I, son I had to put up, and if my son had to put up with what I had to put him through, I guarantee it wouldn't be a good life. He's had a better life because it was short than having to put up the shit I had to put him through. We pay for our father's sins. And I'm telling you, I'm a rat motherfucking bastard because my dad was 10 times worse. But well, I'm getting better. But El Perro, with respect, you're kind of making Mark's argument for him. Because, I mean, so? we're, we're all, we all fall short of the glory of God. And right. By that metric and that measurement, if we're all falling short, wouldn't it be better to spare all of our children from our evil? Lessons? No, it's, it's, no it's, it's, it's not a matter of falling short. It's a matter of practicing because we know we will fall short. How many times? I don't know. Scripture even says seven times a man shall fall before he comes upon his righteousness. So, so it's not about the falling. So it's not about the falling and it's not about the destination. It's about the travel in between. Are you going to keep doing the same thing that leads to the same insane results? Or are you going to learn to change and adapt as you go? So, El Perro, if you met a grieving widow, right? she's a grieving widow, and her, her infant baby has just sort of been lost through leukemia or something, and she's upset, would you would you say to her that is a good thing that your, your baby died? No. Well, I want to still make... No, that's, that's not what I'm saying. That's my point, yes. But externally, I can't say that. Internally, through my firsthand experience, I can say the death of my son was a good thing. He went quietly, peacefully, and he didn't have to suffer with what I would have put him through, which is hell. Guaranteed you. Yeah, and so um, I want to you, still, man, that he you. could be alive and not with right, you, right? So, so, so the scripture talks about the end of a matter, and because the end of a matter is better than, a, than the beginning of a matter, right? And so what we take from the end is much more important than how we began the matter. Right. So if peace came out of it, then that's what the good thing is. And that's what I see. OK, With Joel, I that, look, we got a yeah, lot of people Joel, on panel. Yeah, yeah, you guys got to right, try to right. keep these things as short as you can and still make your point, Joel. Yeah, I wanted to ask to talk with El Piro, man. I, I lost my son, too, at 13. I know exactly what you're talking about. I wanted to, to relay, I guess, what it sounds like. I think you and I both. You know, our understanding are going through it's not necessarily wanted to encourage you it's not that god protected your son from you necessarily what the lord gave me was isaiah, isaiah 57 1 when my son died it, it, uh, it says good people pass away the godly often die before their time but no one seems to care or wonder why no one seems to understand that god is protecting them from the evil to come and we all die you know and so we don't know what may be coming in our children's lives that we would have made worse or better. We don't know, but God knows. And so all these things happen, you know, with, with God, God's intentions, God's mind knowing. And just- You guys I, I, should get together and have have a, a private conversation on that. that as well. You should. I was gonna ask that if you wanted to, El Piro. I mean, well, I, really, I, I, I just wanna, years I ago, wanna uh, sort of ask, I'm so, I'm so sorry to hear that, Joel, that, that's, that's horrible. Um, I just want to sort of say, but if if God is the one that's taking all of these children from leukemia, from from um, you know uh, uh, measles, from all of these different diseases, is is that a good thing? I'm sorry, Mark, but that's to me that's stupid speculation. I'm I'm not God, and I don't think you are either. So we can't know, but God knows. So well, you think so that God might be doing evil? No, I, I think God loves the hell out of us. And does things that we won't understand until we're face to face with him, or if, if he chooses to answer you directly, as you've asked earlier tonight. But I don't, I'm not going to speculate for God like you are. You just Flow state is having connection you. problems. Um, so huh? if he keeps God works in mysterious in. ways, boys. <laughs> no, no, we. we that's pretty obvious. <laughs> I, I, I want to. I want to devote all of my time, not just. <laughs> 
not just in what I consider help. Well, totally what I consider helping people. I really do. Right. And, and no matter what that entails. So, yes, so Mark, you've asked a question. Um, I, I don't think there's a simple, straightforward answer that is, that is very, very satisfactory un, unless it's going to be a, a deeper compound answer because you've asked a serious and tough question. And I appreciate that, by the way. So, yeah, it's a problem of evil, essentially. Yeah. OK, so so my answer to the problem of evil is the following. Just like I would be willing for my child, my sister to give up a kidney. Now, I know that they're going to cut me open and take part of me out. And I know there's going to be a healing process. And I know I'm going to have itchy stitches. And I know, et cetera, et cetera, bandages for a few weeks. It's going to be horrible. Mm -hmm. But I would still do it. Now, why would I do that? Well, it's because the sacrifice of myself is worth it to me in the larger picture. Right. This is why people have more than one child. I mean, because you'd think we'd learn our lesson with the first one and quit, but we don't. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so we all know that that if the benefit is great enough, it justifies the sacrifice. You agree? You don't agree? Uh, yeah, I, I do think that sort of the the consequences of you um, engaging that behavior, it, it's the moral or it's the good thing to do because the the suffering and the, the uh, uh, counterfactual of what will happen is way worse and way more evil. I get that. But sure. the problem then comes that when you're talking about a God, um, your your actions are not limited. Your actions are unlimited. So you're okay. not bound by what's the best of, of two options. You're bound what's the best of any option possible. I, well, I would agree with you when I'm arguing with a standardized Christian. For instance, if, yes. if heaven had showed up, there'd be no need for the worldwide deluge of water. For instance, right? You could just show up, that'd right. fix it, prove himself, mm -hmm. right? So I, I agree right. with you in that argument against average Christianity. Your argument yeah. doesn't work very well for me personally. You are aware of that, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. But I mean, I presume that you don't think that, you know, viruses and disease are caused by a God. No, no only that heaven purposefully transferred them here and put them here on purpose. Okay, but that would be a pretty evil thing to do, right? Depends, Depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Um, well, some people would say it would be evil to live on this earth forever. That that the vampire is cursed. Um, or possibly. for bad yes. people to get to get away with their their sin forever. Yeah. But I think but, that sort of in the way that life is cut short. Um, that's not the same thing as curtailing eternal life. Like if you get leukemia in a six-month-year-old, sure. um, I don't think that's the same Wait, principle. a six-month-year-old? As... What's a six-month-year-old? Don't, don't worry about that. Let's not pick on that. It doesn't matter. He meant six-month-old. Oh, okay. Six months. Threw me off, um, man. I just, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be a jerk about it. I apologize, Mark. Yeah, maybe it's just a regional thing. I, I am from a different country. Um, the The... Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Okay. He's an Aussie. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so. Um, the water's not yeah, the only thing that goes backwards down the toilet. Then, okay. Roger, heard it. Uh -oh. Yeah. So, in cases like that, it's not just a curtailment of immortality. It's a a um, cut off from life of somebody that possibly had a full and fruitful life in front of them. Okay. So, that's, so, so here's the two serious. possible paradigms that we're discussing. A person lives their normal life and dies at a normal age, and then that is the end of them. That's mm -hmm. that's one possibility that we're discussing here. Well, the other, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, it was me. I'm sorry. I was just interjecting. What's normal? But please, what's next? Okay, but but the theistic the average life expectancy of a human. Yeah, let's say let's say best case scenario, somebody, you know, uh, grows up, uh, gets old, dies. OK, on average, that's the way it works. OK. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So uh, but but there's also the theistic. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that. Uh, but there's a theistic viewpoint 
where that is not the end. And, and there's this reward, this heaven afterward. In which case, um, anything that happens to me now in comparison to that would be a very, very small experience. Right, Mark? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. All right. So, so if it's true that a innocent child is born with cancer and it's incurable and they die from it, which mm -hmm. does happen, right? Yeah, absolutely does. In the in the theistic paradigm, their their situation may have been very very difficult, very very painful, and they it, and from what I understand would even recall that painful experience. But when they're in that utopian place where there is no disease, there is no death, and there is no crime, how significant would that be to that person that they remember that? Well, it would be an interesting experience at that point, and maybe even very, very upsetting. Yes? Mm -hmm. All yes. right. But, but I have to think that in that elevated state, if there is some life after this life, I don't like the word afterlife, but if there is another okay. life after this one, then, um, that, then that would be uh, a, a, a distant memory uh, to that person. Um, if, I, if I could, Richard, um, would it be something akin to stubbing your toe 30 years ago? Yeah, well, at the uh, let's not downplay it too much, and and that's not a perfect example, but still, your point stands. When I was yeah, five and I scraped my knee, it was my worst pain ever. But well, now I, I don't know that's the case. I don't know it would be a distant memory because I don't know the actual mechanics of any kind of afterlife or life after this one or any kind of you know a, a higher dimensionality to ours. Um, well, I, I, I don't know, know about all be, that. I, yeah, I don't know I, about I, I all don't that know. either. But that's but, that's to be expected, really, Mark. I mean, I, so we're, we've all been like that. We've all been like this. If you don't understand God, you don't understand eternity, you don't understand whatever the alternative to afterlife is, Richard was just talking about, then yeah, then your expectations are lower. You know, you, you don't, the here and the now, you know, they say is all that matters, a lot of people say. So yeah, no, it's Do you understand expected. afterlife? Do you understand afterlife? I do, I, yeah, I do. But that's because so I've, I've got that. a higher expectation. Pardon? Uh, How do you know that? I Before we experience. get into that, I want to I want to tag B.S. Lewis on topic and thank you, chat, for being on topic. Uh, trauma also shapes positive personality traits. It depends on the mm, person. It can. It can. It depends a, a great it deal. Does. And the associated um, uh, mechanisms that occur after there, there's a lot there. I, I don't think it's the yes, trauma that shapes people. I think it's oh, it it's. Well, no, I think it's the uh, reaction to the trauma, the actual um, um, behavioral reaction. Yes, how, to how you deal with it. Yeah, I, I think. Sorry, I didn't mean to really itself. interrupt. And I wasn't no, 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 to that's okay. I, I think the trauma itself is always bad, even if we can get something good out of it. We, we talk a lot about this in dialectics, which you basically Fair enough. can find good in bad things that happen to you. But the, the thing about dialectics is it's really important never to confuse a bad thing happening as a good thing, even if you can find good in it. It's really important. Why? why? Well, just, why? never justify the abuse, I think is what he's saying. Yeah, so it, it's oh. so even if that, that bad event makes you more resilient, for mm -hmm. instance. So if um, I work out with one, weights and it's bad that I get a pump well, and it hurt, my finish. muscles are sore, right? That you're saying that's yeah, a bad if you thing? Yeah, if you can actually let me finish, that would be great. Like, seriously. So um, sure. See even you next though Tuesday, that buddy. bad thing happened. Yeah. Yeah. What, ahead, what a charming Come individual. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah so if, 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 you, if you have resilience from something, the, the problem is that if you start looking at that bad thing as a good thing, then you'll start to repeat behaviors that will put you in that bad situation because you have identified it as something that contributes to your well-being or your your uh, um, um, development kind of thing. And then we have um, um, 
maladaptive behaviors coming in where you'll basically yes. look for those those situations which you're saying hey it's good because it makes me a stronger person and it's actually a bad situation maybe let's tell me self-flagellating self-flagellating monks <laughs> okay i wanted to, i wanted to add the marks a uh, point if i may to help maybe make, make sense so a lot, a lot of it is probably more relatable with uh, bad relationships, for example, with, with people that have gone through abusive relationships, particularly like abused spouses and, and children, especially that, that have had abused childhoods, abusive parents and whatnot, they'll they'll grow up traumatized. And statistically speaking, a lot of a lot of people that they get into drug and alcohol abuse and things like that are because of that kind of trauma. It's a life, you know, and even if they do get really good coping skills and mechanisms to, to deal with it and cope with it, it's a lifelong struggle. Is that basically what we're talking about, Mark? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, it, it's just more if you go through something and you come out the other side and you sort of go, uh, this is just an example of what possibly could happen. You know, I'm not giving any kind of actual example. I'm not giving any kind of mm -hmm. real world example. It's just if you go through something and you're like, oh, well, I'm tough. I can make it through that. That was good that that happened to me because I'm a tough person that can you learn something right? because you right right that i learned something i'm a tough person um you you will will be drawn towards those situations going well i'm tough so i can handle it kind of thing where the actual situation itself is very very harmful and um, we've got to separate the actual um the the situation which might be bad with the good that you've found out of it and i think that's really important there's a bible verse you just reminded me of something about how god lets us go through the bad things in life so that we can help others that also go through it I'm trying to find that verse. I think it's Philippians. Here, um, I mean, there's some great things in the Bible. Uh, the, the golden rule is really good. Uh, you know, that, that's been oh, no, around no. for a long time. Yeah, and really good. You remind yeah, me. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I actually like the Buddhist rendition better. Oh? The golden sure. rule. Yeah. I think. Kind of the, isn't that the negative version? Richard, it's sort of don't do things to other people that you wouldn't like done to yourself, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's 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 more like do what they need, not what you would do for them. Ah, yes, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so like, yeah. learn the person, learn what they need, give them what they need, not what they want, something like that. Mm -hmm. Which so I think I is a, benevolence. Yeah, I have a question for you, D Doc, and I I believe it's actually very much on topic. What is enmity? Enmity, it's literal or figurative distance. So uh, you and I have literal physical enmity right now, but we are not suffering from emotional enmity. Okay. How, how can, oh, em, how can the enmity that. bruise a heel then? How, how Like the, when there would be enmity between the child and and the uh, the offspring of the woman and the snake, how can there's, how, if there's distance, how can there be a bruise on a heel and the bruise on the head? Very good. Oh, yes. Thought... And it and it comes in that specific order for exactly that reason. Um the the ah, distance okay. the the distance there is literal uh physical distance, and then the bruising is is phys is a physical scenario as well, which means it would have to come in that order, which means it can't be talking about snakes because snakes um, are, are all you, around you... us. Are you talking about enmity, like E N M I T Y, enmity? Yes. Right. Um, as, yeah. as far as I know, that means hostility. Like if I have yeah. enmity towards, or, you know, I can tell from his comments, generally specific has enmity towards me. Well, you know, let's that's, let's that's not a, let's not mistake a translation for the Hebrew word. It might oh, okay. like conflict. Right, conflict, distance. But I, I like the I like the distance one because it's more peaceful resolution on that. So in regards to the, the subject matter, when we talk about why does God allow good for evil people and evil for good people, that is a massive distance between the two uh, moralities, I guess you could say, of what, uh, maybe I'm butchering this, uh, <laughs> help me out, Edon. Uh, but well, but well, your we your do, internet is definitely is, butchering it. Is everyone understanding what he's yeah. saying so far? Half and half. Rick, will you refresh, it. please? Okay. So, yeah, no problem. Yeah, go ahead and refresh, brother. Uh, Batman, you have not commented yet. Do you know the original question? 
Why are you gay? No, that wasn't that, it. No. That wasn't it. No. That, was a, that was a great voiceover, though. That was. <laughs> um, can you repeat the question? I know it has something to do with the problem of evil. Mark, would you? It was your question. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, why why do good things happen to uh, a bad people, and why do bad things happen to good people? If God is indeed all good and uh, has the has the power to do anything. Oh, okay. Um, I think that's only as a result of um, the the allowance and respecting uh, respecting of free will. I think I think having limited beings. Um, I think having I think beings that are not perfect that have intentions and ha um, and. Uh, have certain limitations, like environmental limitations, um, could will inevitably lead to situations where evil will exist. So I think evil is something that um, that God has taken into consideration by nature of uh, of Him allowing us to have free will. Whereas um, in in the Bible, some it, some beings. Are seen, or it's assumed that they don't have free will because they're, for example, they're just praising him forever and ever and ever, right? Um, whereas us, um, we have the choice to to be in relationship with him or not. I like to simplify um, that by just simply saying: so God wants, God loves us. He wants us to love him, and he does everything in his ultimate power of the universe to help us understand that he loves us, except force us to. You can't force love. Well, I, I have a problem with that because it doesn't address sort of natural evils. So, you know, volcanoes, floods, disease, um, things that aren't a product of human free will doing anything. No one used free will to cause an earthquake and people, you know, suffer and die and um, lose all their, their home and, and have, you know, general suffering happen. Um, this is true for a lot of things that I would term as natural evils under the the, the Christian doctrine. Um, so I would, if natural evil. I would yeah I would yeah. counter argue if if that's natural evil, maybe it's evil to, to live near a volcano. Yep, I was gonna well, say that. Still still just the same. Uh, there are volcanoes of such magnitude that there's no escaping them and, and still be on the same continent. But Mark, I'd like to improve your argument and strengthen it against what people normally say and on that same topic. It's actually worse than that uh, if you consider that heaven is available. Do you see what I mean by that? If heaven mm -hmm. is available, heaven was always available. If heaven was always available, why have suffering at all? Or volcanoes. My, if my people who are called by my name would but humble themselves, change from, turn from their wicked ways and pray, I would hear from heaven and heal the land. There's a yes, quid pro heal quo. the land There's meaning a this the earth. That. Yes, yeah, but that's, heal that's the hearing land from the heaven, earth, right? That's hearing from heaven. That's that's hearing from hell, heaven and healing the earth, the land itself. Why, maybe why, do, even the why do you lock it, your right? door? Why do you lock your door at night when you go to bed? If you do, do you lock your door or do you leave your door open? Let's say yes. Sign out I, there I lock it. Everyone's welcome. Help yourself to my refrigerator. For all the food's yours. You can take whatever you want. No holes barred. I think he answered. I'm not sure what you're looking for. Well, and so, if I may, I mean, no, you do a, lock your door. Why do you lock your door? I mean, uh, when you're when you're when your home is available. Normally, because people need to survive. But your home is available. Why would you lock your door? It's available for somebody Stop to stop thieves. Do you take because every if, Do you take every square inch of of space in your room? Because of your, people, of your home, could you not lay a few more people down in your room? Why Why would you if, shut that up? Well, because if you give your entire home to anybody that desires it, you wouldn't have space for yourself. Well, I guess then God's selfish. I guess he wants to make sure he has enough space to spread his elbows out at the dinner okay. table. God, God's okay. I'm sure. According to Mark, God is, God is selfish. But I was well, asking, Richard. I, mean, I wanted to add. I wanted to okay. add from well, a, the scientist, I, technologi yeah. technologist's point of view, like uh, Freeman Dyson, I love how you said Technology is a gift of God next to the gift of life. It's perhaps the greatest gift of all the sciences. So 
the idea that, that we could stop volcanoes and we can we can fix problems, you know, on a global and even interplanetary scale now. That's God teaching us how to solve problems. And that's a, lot a of good thing that's happening because we're learning well, something. I, I agree. I wanna... but a lot of us attribute God teaching us. So you think, say, the earthquake in Haiti, which killed so many people, was a good thing? No, not at all. I think that it. I wouldn't blame God so much as us. We right. have all kinds that of technology. Of... We could have helped those people not, you know, the people could help themselves even not live there, first of all. But yeah, we, we could have flying we jets could... and cars by now. We would have, the, the lava never would have touched us. I agree. We could have detected agree, it sooner, Joel. you know, and, and protected that area. You know, there's all kinds of ways to counter earthquakes. There's all, you know, there's all kinds of science. Ooh, well, God should have made us better. Yeah. I like what I well, that's what he's trying to do. God's trying to make us better without forcing us. Well, why did he well, fail think, the first time to make us good enough to, to not have these problems? Because they can't find enough people to want to learn. That's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I think that God could do a lot better than sort of, you know, wait for us you? to um, sort of struggle with science, make very, very small incremental steps through methodological I naturalism. I can't of, blame God um, for that. That's, uh, excuse that's your me, fault. excuse me, excuse me. That's your fault. Um, not so, God's. Excuse me, it woman is. speaking. It is. The buck it, goes it, it, all the way to okay. the top. This misgender me then. Um, no, 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 right. no, no, no. It was, it was a funny, um, it was a funny basically meme. Basically, you let everybody. It, was, it wasn't many of you. I apologize and, again. And basically, just just writhe in agony and could have at any time given us penicillin, but decided, what the hell? Don't need to. And this, like all this struggle to find no, science, we painstakingly go through and develop everything. You're saying, well, that's a learning experience. That, that okay, guys, happening. you're going to have 10 minutes while I smoke a cigarette to absolutely go at each other and, and, and be I'm completely hiding. hiding. Uh, it's scary. This will teach you to smoke in the house. And, and then I'm coming back, okay? Fix out, boys. Do you actually believe so can I, I want to respond to Mark's inquiry about the, the natural well, evil because well, I, I want to ask that question. Mark, do you believe that you're naked? That what? I'm serious. Do you believe that you're under naked? my clothes? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's... What? I, well, I'm not in the conventional, the normative sense, naked right now because I am clothed, right. but I am so naked under my clothes. What you know and what you believe, right? No. God no, damn it, Rick. What are you talking about? Okay, so well, knowledge is a subset of belief. Hold up, Rick, I'll explain to you. Knowledge is a subset mm -hmm. of belief, right? And it's mostly got to do with our confidence level in whatever it is that we believe. Mm -hmm. So um, in order to know something, you have to believe it already because it doesn't make sense to, to know something but not believe it, right? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Right. So knowledge is justified believe. through belief, right? So it's a belief that has been justified and is in fact true. But how do you know? You can that? come to the knowledge and then the belief follows. You might not I... have the knowledge of what a fist feels like, but all you'll believe, you, you know. All of what you just explained to me about knowledge, how knowledge works, how do yeah. you know that? What do you mean, how, how do I know that? How do you know <laughs> it? How do Johnny. I know that? Because I have a justified true belief in it. Because Check somebody me. taught it to you. Well, no. No, it's it's basically to do with you got that sort of knowledge from somewhere. You got what's that a belief? definite? What's the well, definition? Everyone gets knowledge from somewhere, even if uh -huh. you look out and say, "Hey, I see that pen on my table." Nobody told me. Some about logical it. processes are innate. You're born with the ability to reason. Follow the logic train. Everybody yeah. gets the knowledge from somewhere. Sure. Where did the knowledge come from? My senses. Really. You got it from somewhere. Yes. Yes, my senses. Where did your senses get it from? The next step. Where did my senses get it from? Yeah. From, from his sensei. Well, I, I experienced my senses directly. Why Why would I need something so, so, else? So I, your senses got it from you. Your Rick, why don't you make your point directly? instead of trying to bait people along this weird okay. path? This so is so there's, strange. There's an infinity that you will follow back to the basis of knowledge. Yes, so it's called the fallibility problem. Well, I call that God. All knowledge, all knowledge goes back to three sources: the dogmatic assertion. No, God. no, hold on, Brick. Let me let me talk. So Social it goes back to three things: there's dogmatic assertion, circular reasoning, and um, and um, if I could just if I could just actually speak. 
Um, no, 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 no. It's a dogmatic assertion, um, circular arguments, or uh, infinite regress. All knowledge will knowledge encounter though. one of those. Infinite They're called the Munchausen yeah. trilemma. Basically, all, all, all three, uh, all claims to knowledge will go back to one of those sources. Now, Karl yeah, Popper, who wrote about this extensively, I, no, I we actually, only make knowledge want... claims. That's the I... thing. Like, this is the thing you don't understand. No. Like, when I say, no. hey, I know this, right, mm -hmm. that is a knowledge claim. You don't yeah, I want, I want to hear what through. Mark is saying, actually. If, so if you guys could stop interrupting him. Go ahead, Mark. I actually, I'm interested. So if, in this. if I make a knowledge claim, I say, okay, I know my wife's in the other room, right, and I make a knowledge claim. If, if that is, in fact, true, then it is knowledge. If it is, in fact, not true, just say she left, five minutes earlier and I didn't hear her go, then that, like, I don't actually have that knowledge even though I'm making the claim. So, so is that like Schroeder's cat, though? I'm not trying to be a smart ass. Is that kind of like Schroeder's cat? Not really, no. You won't know no, until you just, go into the oh, room and open the door? Oh, no, no. It's no. empirical the whole point, anecdotal. There's, there's two things. There's ontology, which is okay. the actuality of things. That's that's the, the actual metaphysics of the current state of whatever it is that you're talking about. And there's epistemology, which is how we get to knowledge and belief in things. Like the so root of we, something, right? Like the where it came well, from kind of thing or no? Or is yeah, that etymology? Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, yeah. etymology. It's, our, it's our justification right. of things. So we basically talk about things in epistemology because no one can access the ontology. No one can say, hey, I'm just going to go directly to where my wife is without my senses or without justification. So when right. Brick's saying you have to get knowledge from somewhere, well, yes, of course you do. You mm -hmm. have to come up with this epistemology, this understanding from somewhere. Right. It's and it's it's really a total, it's full simple. It's either anecdotal or empirical evidence. You go into the room, check if your wife is there, otherwise you don't know. Um there's other ways you could know. You could no. I don't know, be weird and have a tracker on her. You could you could, you know, have, um, have other things. But well, yes, the trackers I, can be spoofed. But I, I agree with you. I'm 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 an empiricist. I think that the only way that you can have true knowledge is by observation through your senses. That's I think the that scientific is the method, the, the Sir Bacon, Sir Francis Bacon story. I agree. Well, yep. sure, that that's one one method. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, you could just at a base level. Well, I mean, just because you use your senses doesn't mean that it's a scientific method. That's sort of you know hypothesis and induction and things like that. Um, you can just look at something and say, hey, because I see it there, then empirically right. it is there. I, I know it's there. If you're um, going to rely on your senses for science, you'd have never discovered atomic theory. But yeah, I agree. So in regards well, sure. to yes, yes. so in regards to knowledge versus belief, they are two very different things. Belief knowledge is the absence of knowledge. Belief. They're two very different things. No, knowledge is a subset of belief. I have a series of beliefs, right? And I mean, I, 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 I get your point. I get your point. Yeah, and I don't. I, like, have, I, have I, a, I see how it's it's logically consistent. And it holds water. Um, I think both ways actually hold water, depending on what, how you're treating belief. Right. So is wisdom knowledge applied well, or am I misquoting that? I don't know. I mean, wisdom has a few different definitions. I would probably use it as sort of conventional, um, sort of common sense, um, that's basically intu intuitive um, belief is is how I would, would sort of... Applied understanding is how I've just explained it in the past. Yep. Same yeah, to me. I mean, you could define it as that, sure. Yeah. You guys but, isn't, isn't understanding and knowledge kind of like it's like saying describing using the word woman to describe what a woman is isn't it wouldn't that be kind of really too synonymous almost i'm not trying to be well, pedantic i'm just no wisdom wisdom I, I feel like wisdom implies learn from experience really or you know so like i can know about the battle of 1812 but i didn't so then it is knowledge well applied if you if you knew if if you knew that if you made this attack exactly in the same way each time and lost each time, then you should not make that attack the same way. So then you would apply that knowledge well in order to have the wisdom to know to not attack that way again. It's so like uh, what did Einstein say? Uh, madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a insanity. different result. Or insanity, well, madness, yeah. insanity. Uh, yeah, well, and, and it also guys, said, yeah. and it also yeah. proves itself, and it also proves itself through progress and efficiency. The more you do, it's like riding a bike. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Same thing with yeah. knowledge. The more you apply it, the better you get at it, the more efficient and more progression you make. 
still it's still right. all variable. But if I may, guys, Batman, like half an hour ago, wanted to still talk about the natural evil thing if y'all want to let him. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I'm happy to hear from from Batman. Go for it. Mike's all yours. Yeah. So the 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 response that I that I gave um, it was mainly focused on the situation when it comes to humans, right? It, I didn't think that we were talking about just you know all evils, so to speak. Um, so to to address the natural evil aspect of the argument, because I I prefer to kind of separate them. Um, why i okay so i separate them because one's moral one isn't right Why i is think it moral i think i think one of them one of them being moral is that we're we're projecting we're projecting our um our ideas as to what is um good or evil on something that inherently right ontologically isn't good or evil Right, because there's no good or bad intention behind um, what is essentially an accident, right? Like evil is a character right? thing. Well, I would agree with that in a sort of secular or or, or an atheistic worldview that you know, sure. natural events are not any kind of intentional thing that happens. They're just accidents that have no blame at all, so that morality can't be applied to them. But when you add an agent who is intentionally causing everything to happen, you then do have an intent behind them and an agent causing. Good point. Them. That 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 would be true. That would be true, and this is where the flavor of Christianity will come in, right? That would be right. true if that's you know if, if that was something that I hold to, but I don't hold to the idea that God is literally controlling everything that goes on okay. in the universe. Um, I think uh, the 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 free will or and and randomness are a thing in the universe i mean okay. i know there's no verify you know with no way to verify true randomness it's mainly post hoc as far as i'm concerned um but you know that's essentially how i kind of address that uh, that particular I, issue I so that, man, would, you, would you concede that god doesn't have the power to stop these things no um him him choosing to not stop them um or to stop them um him having the power to do it is not indicative of him um him not doing it is not indicative of him lacking the ability to do it basically i think if, if um, i may yeah, man. so so we're talking about uh, no we're talking, maybe we're talking about no more joel again okay yeah so, no, so I, was, I was listening. I was listening. I, so we're talking about I the. To, I wanted to offer a quick summary of. Keep uh, going, GS. Push through. Part of <laughs> what you're trying to say, Odin, was that uh, God created a perfect universe, as the Bible talks about, but mankind violated the OEM recommendations. So that's why there's death and disease and volcanoes and earthquakes. That doesn't hold any consistent logic because if God created everything from scratch, then He set our our. Uh, our RPMs to a certain frequency, right? Like our RPM set, or like, RNG. our equilibrium is set in the wrong spot. If so many of us are choosing evil on the good evil decision. That's a, that's a weird assumption. I don't know. So, so it's so a weird. Go ahead. So here, here, here's my, here's my, and I think this is kind of like we, you know, as a Christian, I feel like I've had my fucking nuts in the vice pretty much the whole night now from from mark and a few of the others <laughs> I, i've actually got a question small bites. i've got i've got yeah, a I've got uh, well here. i mean they, they used to fit in your mouth but then you use too much teeth um but i, I do have a genuine <laughs> question um my genuine, pussy. my genuine question my genuine question is that uh so if if we're t if we're going to say that from a secular point of view that a little fish being eaten by a bigger fish there's is there's no evil intent in that right it's just what little fish get eaten by bigger fish most of the time right i mean that's kind of how it goes there's there's no like little fish tribunal that gets all like to well the injustice of it let's get to the bottom of the scooby doo mystery why did that little fish get swallowed by that bigger fish so from a secular point of view um so so where does morality come from from a secular point of point of view if we all come from pond scum it's a natural instinct 
Okay, so I'm just first going to say straw man for a start. As well, hold, hold on. Well, how is that a straw man? That's well, that's your well, worldview. Well, pond, pond scum is a straw man. That is it a, is definitely a straw man. Yeah, like seriously, that is you, like you don't straw man. Straw man. You don't wait, think wait, that that's where you wait, came Mark, from? Mark is Mark is no. right. Pond scum is way too complex <laughs> compared to what a biogenesis a single, comes from. It is a cell yeah. amoeba. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. From a single cell amoeba. I'm personally in favor. No, amoeba is a modern organism. It's complex. Um, I'm in favor of amyloid world. If you're interested um, in a biogenesis, I think that's the most likely explanation. How I don't claim knowledge of that, I just think it's the most likely explanation. You're getting amyloid lost on the straw man. Um, but yeah, that's a complete straw man. So when we're talking about morality, oh, did, her, did um, that straw really... man hurt your feelings? No, just your argument. Um, no, no, seriously, when we're in, talking engage about... the question. If a little fish eaten by a, by a bigger fish, where's the fish tribunal? Because I'm if sorry, I came if I came through your monitor and started if I came through my, if I came through your monitor, my hand came through your monitor and started choking you out like uh, Darth Vader style right now. You would probably want come. Some, you would want some. Ju- <laughs> You want some justice, right? I reserve the right to act however I want. You know, like that's fine. I mean, wouldn't you like, want like, some justice? Stop talking about like strangling people and stuff. You weirdo. no, I'm, I'm like, saying seriously. justice, right? <laughs> I mean, what a does, does it hurt um, your feelings? If you came from a single no, cell. Yeah, it hurts so good. Yeah. So, so, hey, so okay. Mark, um, what were you so, saying? The, the, there was a question. Mark, there was was a question ahead, there. Like, yeah, where Mark, does morality Mark, come from? Answer. So, I think I think we're we're looking at um, systems That's of morality true. that are based upon frameworks in which social animals can basically engage with one another. It's no coincidence that the the social animals that we observe all have structures in which there is right and wrong things to do. Now, as as for humans, there's there's a variety of different moral structures we can create, but I think it comes from reciprocity and um, uh, empathy, which seem to be the two emotions that we use for social coordination and social cohesion. Um, you can bypass the emotion process. altogether and so, get there with so, just reason, right? So then, so, uh, so then let me let me give an example. So a killer whale tossing up a seal that it has no intentions of eating, and they're tossing it back yeah. and forth to each other. Was that yeah. amoral? Yeah. Okay. So if I if there are two dudes on a subway just ping ponging you back and forth like the killer whale and you're the seal, is that amoral? Mm-hmm. According to your it is worldview? Immoral, yes. It, yep. No, amoral, not immoral. No, it's immoral. Is what I said. No, it's no, wrong. Said, is it amoral for the killer whales to toss toss around a seal if they have no intention of eating? Did it's you say amoral or immoral? Amoral for that. From okay, for that it's amoral. But we're all animals yep. according to your secular worldview. Uh huh. So where's your outrage? It's just two well, killer whales. Outrage. It's just two killer whales ping pong and your seal ass around. If my answer for me is that what's going to happen? You're going to ask a question and then answer for me. Is that are you going to answer you... it? Answer it. You keep well, moving trying. the goalposts. Is this flirting? Uh, this this guy. It's, it's like answer the question. Ask he, he's feeling my spicy answer. tonight. It's that full moon energy wow. guy. Answer the, Are you going to answer the dude? You've had a whole twenty five seconds answering. to so, gish gallop. <laughs> Tonight, Where'd Junior. Let's go. Spit guy, it out. Richard? If Where'd you don't you have the end, if you don't know, just if, say you don't know. Can I can I answer? Flag on the play. Okay, going around this so if the, the two orca are basically flip-flopping each other around, that may very well be immoral in their society. No, see, you didn't right? even but listen to the premise. So, hello, hello. There's Am two killer so whales flexion, flag on the play. around that they don't intend to eat. Now, that's the premise. And I'm saying if if those orca are, are like flip-flopping a baby orca, something that is one of their own species, that very well may be immoral within their society. However, it's not immoral because it's a seal, the thing that they use for sustenance, just as it's not immoral for me to go and get a steak because that is not my species and they're yeah. not a part of the society that I'm in. Now, no, when I go into the subway and I'm being flopped dropped around by people on the subway, we're talking about empathy and reciprocity, which means that those people live in a society where they don't want to have the same thing happen to them and they shouldn't engage like that with others if they want to live in that society where that does not happen to them unless we so eat you atheist well, societies about, are gutting people alive today right now i bet you like taste China. real good mark but yeah, we're talking like, about like to have a bottle of chianti and some fava beans atheist okay, moral societies are literally gutting people alive that they who are they gutting 
the or like, uh, what's it called? The Muslim what? people in, in China, the North Koreans. So, in you know, just oh, uh, Muslims history. are atheistic society, are they? No, no, no. China is the, the Chinese. Yeah. China. Humans are have slaughtered each over. other all throughout every every paradigm we've ever lived is, in. The point is that that a, that a non godly or you know, basically non theist worldview is variable. What one atheist says Chinese is moral, the next atheist exactly. will say is immoral. So, and who, you who destroyed you an argument, Mark. Joel? Who are the Chinese gutting, Joel? The your let me look it up for you, but the, the, your other no, argument they're is sending them because to you said maybe. Camps. I'm still they're waiting on you to answer the question. Camps. How do you justify amoral and moral? Immoral and China, amoral. I, Hold well, on, you're not hold on. Everybody, everybody, take a little break. He did answer it. He said he's tribalistic. Well, no. Well, no, no. So a, again, the the, the argument, the debate is lost. I'm trying to be simplified. Yes. Yeah. The, the debate is lost because Mark is, is established his it's animalistic society, moral relativity, or, or meta ethical relativity. by saying maybe all of his beliefs are maybe he's got no standard what whatsoever. Mean? So nothing's 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 true. What There's do you no mean? Point. All my beliefs are maybe. That's not true. He's, it's, it's, that's it's not at all true. true. And in fact, no, I'm saying that he has he has at he least the semblance of his own beliefs. If you outsource your mor moral decisions to a book with or a book, he said maybe. Yeah, I maybe. yeah, I heard a speculation. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the moral structure of that orca tribe, which you can't as, know. Okay, so said. because he's because not. What does Jesus you know, say about orca on. babies? But because you're speculating on your worldview, and I'm sure on mine, I think you should adopt mine, Mark. Congratulations. Welcome to Christianity. Okay. So that quiz called... That's the actually Eagle. retarded. That wasn't hard, Richard. That's, I got that's him. God of the gaps or argument me like, from It took me an hour. It's He's converted. basically a logical fallacy where it says that if I'm Dami sure about padre. my beliefs, you're not... Excuse me. Like, seriously, where did you find this guy? Actually, no, you're he, he, he's terrible. he met me at you're, clown school. He decided so not to go, so but he liked me and brought me along. Basically, if, if, if one person this says, if you've got two detectives and one person says, one detective says, okay, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I know who did More it, it was this guy. And the other says, no, I don't have a clue who did it. It doesn't follow that the one that is surer, absent of any other evidence, irrelevant. is the one that is correct. That's I irrelevant object. speculation, Mark. All of your arguments are false. All of your arguments it's are pure speculation so? and irrelevant. I because how is speculation <laughs> investigators might think. And who's more right or more who believes. Yours are right. absolutely yeah. speculation, yeah. too. You can lie all you want and say that you know or that God talks to you, but you're full of shit. Hey, stop ganging up on the scientist. Versus sorry, just anecdotal. Just just uh, what's it called? Uh, in, empirical in evidence of what? Incredulity. You're just empirical making things up. Empirical evidence of what? Empirical of anything, evidence. Making things you know, we, we, of anything. Everybody either chooses to rely on making an empirical observation versus just making crap yes. up, which is what I'm trying to say. You're making crap up. Says the guy who believes in empirical virgin birth that saved him. What? Do we have a book we can reference, Mark, that proves that there's some level of tribalism that makes it amoral or immoral, or is that just you're just wild ass guess? Is yeah, that a way? I have a book that I can yeah. reference that talks about people turning into animals to fight evil aliens. You want me to get animorphs down? Damn, Mark, your your voice got really bassy and manly all of a sudden. Go ahead. It's my huge mess. I just plopped up one on each Christian up there. Plop, plop. Well, yeah, I know. Your voice is... <laughs> so, what was your name again? Man? It's it's always been terrible. There's nothing wrong with terrible. my voice yeah. at all. Flow State or Taylor. Um, but no, the whole Taylor. point is that I'm, I'm giving a moral framework, like a moral system to you, and you're saying, hey, you're, you're going to have empirical yeah. evidence for that. Well, where's the right. empirical evidence? Us a moral that, system. Hang on, let me finish. Let me finish. Joel, Joel, why can't your, you? Your mouth finish, finish moving you're moving every, every time I talk. Every time because I talk. Because I'm trying to accelerate the conversation to make it useful. Christians no, get no, antsy no, when they know crazy. that they're up against the rails and they start doing this crazy. shit. Well, so in fairness, I was trying to put evidence? the secular where balls in place, but now they want to wiggle out of it. Morality comes from God. Where's I'm sorry. Where where where's book, your uh, speculation certainty? See, this is the problem. Christians haven't you read the Bible, point? Mark? Christians just shout you down. They just shout over the top of you because they have no. Decency. You're the only one I'm yelling. yelling. That's because I can't get a word in edgewise. Well, stop being, being and stop being what you accuse others of. And I, I asked I asked a question. I asked a question. Why don't you answer it? Well, because we'll have to look at historical context of a multitude of examples. And why do we atheists, always have to answer that's absolutely a deflecting from a question? Did you even hear the question? 
Yes. What is the question? I, 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 like I can't even hold answer on. without you. Hold up. Hold up. Pathetic. Hold up. I'd like to answer generally's inquiry. Thank you. Yes. Why I wasn't should we? With that Millie Mouth one that he gave me. Why? Why should we? I'll even say put up with. Mark isn't overly sensitive. And Oops. flow state making any given challenges because yeah. you're compelled to by your belief system. Your religion. Which is no belief. No, no, Wait, no. What? You're, I didn't, I'm not holding Mark or Flo to a Christian standard. I'm only right. holding Christians to what they claim. Antichrist mm-hmm. standards. So if, if we're claiming to be Christians mm-hmm. and, and we believe that what we're saying is true and that it would benefit others... Mm-hmm. And that those others don't believe it yet, mm-hmm. we should do all we can to persuade. What about reprobate mind? Well, that that is up to God, and it's not even mine to discern. And I won't know that until it's been finalized. What does the Bible say? Take not the counsel of the ungodly. Well, to put, answer, put take yourself not the not counsel, exactly. sure. To take not the Richard, counsel exactly. of the ungodly. So then why would well, I Lean not on your own understanding, insanity? generally specific. Uh, and, uh, and put on. yourself uh, not in the path of sinners. I mean, uh, so basically, isn't that biblical too? Generally, that he's that? saying he's being I'm sorry, that's why I'm asking. I didn't, I wasn't, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to engage the host. Not the sophistry. There's empirical reasons to discuss these things, to analyze them together across a multitude of spectrum of religions and beliefs or whatever, and we can do that. Right. That That is, that is to say, um, if what I'm believing is true, I should stand on what's true. We should we should try okay. to convince each other with reasonable and preferably agreeable evidence. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think we should all be more oriented towards actually truth to finding yes. truth than to winning for our team. Yes. Oh, so like no more sarcasm? Is that, is that we're, we're, not, we're not going to do sarcasm anymore, Flo? Yeah. We're not going to come in and just take little like shots i'm sorry do I, I, I need to be all in or all out this is this is 100 sarcastic flow or zero percent sarcastic <laughs> the iron mark can you, I've, do you know i've the, never seen a zero percent sarcastic flow so it sounds like you're <laughs> all gas no break bro that's about right actually well how's that working for you you know i've had my ups and downs i bet you have Where what's you his at? name it's when you're sitting on his lap <laughs> Kind of Absolutely. Like I just did. You know what? I w- I want to know what percentage. Uh, can we get like Chat GPT on analyzing generally specific statements to see how frequently he takes something that's not gay and gays it the fuck up? That's childish, man. Well, he he does disapprove of homosexuality. Does he though? And he does hold it as being lesser. So to use mm. it as an insult makes sense. And Taylor, did you know that Chat GBT stopped taking inputs on the internet since like 2020? Yeah, I was I wasn't serious about it. I actually I can't stand the AI responses that are generated by everything. Yeah. It's training us not to think. I would more than agree. Oh my god. I'd love that conversation, by the way. That's that's my job. That's what's about your professional now, the AI crap. Is what? AI. Hmm. We yeah. actually trained now for Microsoft's Intune and their their copilot crap. It's, it's a nightmare. Yeah, I think your mic is shit. I'm leaving, bro. I, I think we've definitely left the uh, the original subject. Yeah, and, I, w- um, I want to hear that. You know, well, I'm, I'm going to take off, but I, I do um I do notice that you, you know the, the deflection that I've encountered today is just insane. Like I ask a question and suddenly it's oh we can't engage with these people because they're he's paused. He's timing you out. Just, let me, just a real quick timeout just to give Tyler space in case he has something to say right away. Peace and respect. Welcome, Tyler. Have you been listening very long? Do you have anything to add right now? No, but I did just get a good night's sleep. Oh, good. Clap nice. for you. Give us more. It's about time. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mark. What were you saying? Yeah, I'm going to take off. The, 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 you know, I've been trying to answer as best as I can and just being interrupted. I've been trying to sort of ask questions and they just defer, deflect and stuff. So. Um, yeah, before I'll you probably, go, yeah. Before you go, I would offer a show dedicated to you at your schedule convenience. If oh. you find me to be, uh, I don't know, more agreeable or whatever. 
Reasonable. Well, okay, I, sure. I want I'll I go. want a home field advantage, New England Patriots, fifty yard line tickets. That's where I want my show at my earliest convenience. Can we do that, Richard? Yeah, absolutely. Go Pats. I want one too. Okay, you can. I mean, I have two tickets, so I can sell you each one. Two tickets to paradise. You've got my email address, Richard. I'm always happy to talk to you, mate. And and I know you 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 appeared on my show really early on, so I'm you know I'm I'm more than happy to. So shoot me an email, and and we can tee something up. That's not a problem at all. That's lovely. Uh, Hey, good to meet you. Subscribe to me as well. Thanks for coming. Just go right over there. It'll be your favorite channel. Good to meet you, Mark.